Peace family, welcome back to my channel or if this is your first time here, welcome. Make sure you hit that subscribe button and turn on post notifications if you're looking for inspiration, encouragement, and wellness along your journey. Today I'm going to be doing like a story time. I haven't, we haven't had story time in a while. And while I am steaming my hair, I felt like it would be a good time to just chat with you about how I became a loctician. So if you've ever seen one of those graphics where they talk about your journey and how like, it's like linear on one side, it's like what you think success looks like. And on the other side, it's just like all these jumbled, like a ball of like web of things and like this is what the journey to success actually looks like like that is me I'm on that side where I am today I it's like I envisioned it but like not this way honestly because how I first got into hair we'll start there because I feel like it all like ties together I first became obsessed with hair when I was nine I know the age because my aunt taught me how to cornrow. And I had been playing with dolls and things, but I couldn't figure it out. And so I was like, oh my gosh, I really wish I knew how to cornrow. She was like, oh, that's easy. And she taught me how to cornrow. I kid you not, from that day forward, I don't think I've ever gone a day without touching hair. Like seriously, it is just, it was in me, but that just unlocked it for me. So I learned how to cornrow. And then, honestly, my mom is not, her hair is not like her thing. She she likes to think it's her thing, but it's not her thing. So she used to do our hair, my sister and I, and I was like, oh my gosh, if I can cornrow this doll, I gotta be able to figure out how to cornrow my own hair. So, I got in the mirror and I started practicing just braiding. Well, honestly, I think I started with flat twists because I was straight with flat twists. But I was like, okay, if I can coral this doll and I can flat twist on this doll, I gotta be able to do it on myself. So I started flat twisting my hair myself and I was like, oh my gosh, it's working. So that means I can coral my own hair. So I started doing my own hair and it was like, I needed it. I needed it. Like if nothing, if I did nothing else with that gift, being able to do my own hair gave me so much confidence just as a, as a teen, as a preteen. So, um, I did my own hair and then I was like, well, I need to make some money. I can make money doing hair. Like this, there's boys at the time that needed their hair done. Like, yeah, I can do it. And <sighs> doing your own hair is, low key not like doing other people's hair because I, while I, yes, I could cornrow, yes, I could flat twist, parting. Like I was down to myself and was like, I'm horrible at this. Like I cannot part to save my life. Granted, this is me comparing myself to my best friend. She kills it with the parts, okay? It's no wonder she grew up to be an engineer. Like her part game is amazing. At how are we like 11 years old? So I was comparing myself to her and was like, okay, I can't part because I don't part like her. And so that brought me down. I was like, okay, cornrowing's not my thing. Like, uh, you know, I'll just stick with doing my own hair. So fast forward to me, I started working at my aunt's salon as a shampoo assistant. And that journey is a whole story in and of itself. But within working in the salon, being in the salon, every weekend, in the evenings after school, I saw that while cornrow wasn't my thing, there were other areas within the salon or within hair that I could do that I was good at, particularly shampooing, like shampoo game unmatched, okay? So I could I could make money doing something else in hair. I don't necessarily have to cornrow. So okay, that kept me motivated to keep going. I was in the salon for 10 years, shampoo assistant, salon assistant. Um, I started working on kids, doing blowouts, doing roller sets, you know, just the things kids, well, back then, um, 
young people did in the salon to help out and just paying your dues because back then being in the salon is a, was a rite of passage. It's like, yeah, you probably could do hair, but you got to like make it through the salon culture. And so I was in that salon until I was 21 and I decided, okay, don't want to be here every single weekend. I'm like fresh out of college. I want to mix and mingle, yada, yada, yada. I'm going to be a natural hair stylist. I, I'm going to do work for myself out of my house and do hair. This is kind of when the natural hair movement started to like pick up or was just getting started. Right. And I started doing twist outs or flat twist styles or coil styles for clients that I was getting. And it was just so sporadic. Like people would come for those styles kind of when they didn't feel like getting their hair done or they would get a style, but then spend a couple weeks, sometimes months, like doing wash and goes, like things that didn't really require uh, professional input. And I say professional because just someone else, because I was not a professional at the time. So I was like, okay, well, this is really inconsistent. And then YouTube university started blowing up. So I was like, okay, yes, I'm educating people or rather sharing my journey to inspire people is really how my YouTube thing started. Um, and I feel like a lot of YouTube, um, natural hair, like channels, I was like, this is cool, but I don't see the, the sustainability of this path, natural hairstylist being one of like constant hustle. So I was like, mm, I don't know about this one, but you know, again, I wanted to keep my hands in hair. So did that for a little bit. <laughs> My husband now, at the time, is some guy that I work with, he had locks. And I was like, well, I could do locks. You wanna come, you know, let me do your hair? <laughs> so I was doing his, his locks and at the time my hair was loose. And I was like, you know what? Oh my gosh, I don't have time to deep condition my hair and do all the things. I'm either going to cut all my hair off or get locks and boyfriend, now husband, however you want to put it. He was like, Oh, Hey, why don't you get, why don't you start locks? And I was like, okay, like I'm, I'm gonna do that. And I was like, well, everybody got locks. I'm gonna get sister locks. Like I'm always the one that's wanting to do something different so that I can share like what I learned because like y'all are doing all the same things. Everyone's doing that. Uh, let me do this. So I got sister locks and I was like, Oh my gosh, like this is dope. I'm going to become a sister lock consultant and I'm going to learn how to do this. So winter training for sister locks, which essentially is interlocking. And my, is it my, I feel like my mind, my heart and my intuition honestly was unlocked with that knowledge because interlocking on the internet. Again, I'm, I'm on, I'm on the internet as a blogger influencer interlocking and just the care of locks was so rooted in just damage and unhealthy care that I was like, people have to know that there is a better way. And it was placed on my heart to do that, to unlock or share that same liberation through hair care with locks. So I learned that system and made it my mission to learn about hair care, but apply it to locks. And so from that point, moment forward, I knew that I wanted to become a loctician, but I didn't know how, like, yes, I knew about it, but to know about something and to be something are two totally different, um, paths. 
and <laughs> mind you, I'm still doing natural hair clients. One of the things that really just made me push natural hair to the side, especially after I learned about locks was that, yo, people, not all people, but a lot of people were in, we're in the natural hair movement. A lot of people were, they were doing protective styles, as you call them, as a way to avoid being with their hair. And it was so much negative self-talk about their hair. Like they're sitting in my chair saying, oh, I couldn't do that. Oh, like just all these negative things about their hair. While I felt like I was contributing to their self-hate in a way because I'm over here doing the style that you're wanting in order to avoid and not have to be with your hair. Versus when I was behind the chair serving someone that had locks, it was a, a synergy of like wellness and embracing. And I felt I was more able to help shift the mindset and the, the intention of the wellness within someone's life through locks more so than natural hair styling and a lot of the natural hair stylings or at least the people that I was finding or attracting at the time were just like, I don't like my hair. And, the, and then the people who were not like that were just like, I'm going to see you four times a year. So it was just like a battle that I felt like there were people more equipped to fight than me. I knew that my purpose was best served with locks. So it's like, I'm not doing natural hair styling. I'm only servicing locks and I'm only cultivating locks with the intention of helping you believe in your power, helping empower you to care for your hair. Like you, I always knew that I did not want to be a loctician that people depended on. I want you to be empowered enough to grow with your hair and care for your hair, even if I'm not here. Because again, so much of what I saw in the salons was, oh, you can't teach them anything. You want them to come to you for everything. And it's just like our people, our community was so disempowered that I knew if this is my mission, if this is my purpose, like I have to do it different. So that is what led me to becoming a loctician. And once I accepted that mission, my journey to just becoming a loctician who knows hair care and empowers people through hair care, man, that is, that is how... I settled in on the assignment or on the, the mission to be a loctician. Now growing a hair care and all the steps that were needed to get to this point, we're going to have to say that for another video, but I hope this hope to give you some insight into my journey and how I went from all natural hair things to talking to you today about locks and about hair care. Like, it's my mission. This is, this is, this is why I'm here. So yeah, let me know if you enjoyed story time and also let me know when's the next time you're going to be steaming your locks, put it down in the comments. And if you have not subscribed, I would love to have you part of the family hit subscribe, turn on post notifications and make sure you're in my digital text club. That's also down below. So subscribe, join the digital text club. And as always, I'm wishing you peace, love, and goodbye. Yes.